Hello class, today we're getting started with our part two of painting. So in order to do that, you'll have a setup that looks like this, some large, medium, small brushes, a sponge, some water, and your paint. It does need to look nice and neat like this uh, when you put it away. To get started, you'll wanna look at your reference image and decide what colors you wanna use for your core shadow, your middle tones, and your highlight, as well as which color sets you wanna use for your background. I think I'm gonna use the yellows to greens and violets to red. Second step that you're going to be doing is taping off your project. So you'll notice here that I'm taping it half on, half off, going all the way around as neatly as possible. We're going to be painting the background first, and we're going to be using tempera paint. So I'm going to use my medium brush. And the nice thing about tempera paint is that it is washable. It's a thinner paint, uh, and you can do a lot of cool creative things with it. You'll notice as I'm filling up my paintbrush that I'm not smashing my paintbrush into the paint. I'm also not smashing it down onto the canvas. This is important if you want to have nice smooth strokes. You want to stay up almost on like the dancer tiptoes, if you could imagine uh, your paintbrush as a little dancer. Make sure to rinse your brush out well between colors. When you go to the next color, notice when I go to dip the, my paintbrush in the cup, I'm always going on the side and not directly into the center of the paint. This is really important so that you don't contaminate the paint and then suddenly we have the same color going throughout the entire thing. What I'm doing now is called Scraffito. It means that you're putting two layers of paint and then using maybe the back end of the paintbrush and scratching out the surface of the paint. If you don't like it, you can just cover it back up as you see me doing here. Uh, the second technique is doing uh, what I'm doing right now, which is just mixing wet paint with wet paint on top of each other, which will create unique color combinations. The third one is that you could take a paper towel or any type of texture tool and you could uh, kind of blot it off. What you're seeing is the yellow peeking through underneath uh, from the green. As you can see, my favorite part about painting is the fact that as long as the paint is wet, you can just paint right over the top of it and remix colors. Uh, you'll notice that you have that sponge in your water bowl so you can create an X on SpongeBob is what I like to say um, and that way you can get your brush clean. The fourth technique and the last technique that I'm going to share with you is maybe you just want to draw some swirls and patterns into your background. So the requirements for your background is just really to explore and experiment your tempera paint. When I go to grade it, I'm looking for two very specific things. I'm looking at whether or not you layered your paint, so exploring that color theory. And the second thing that I'm looking for is your composition. Is it distracting or does it actually help and support your uh, overall project? Now moving on to the bones section of the project, we're switching from tempera to acrylic paint. Acrylic paint does not come out of clothes and it is a very thick paint. So for me, I uh, am gonna use the reds to violets and I could use just straight out of the can violet paint, but instead I'm gonna use my color theory and I'm gonna mix violet. So I'm taking a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, and then I'm going to actually mix a tiny bit of that color into my white. This is important. When you go to mix a color and make it lighter, it's important to take the color, a tiny bit of it, and mix it into white. Do not take white and try and mix it into the color. You'll waste so much white paint and that's not good. You'll also notice when I'm mixing here, it's important to scoop the paint on top of each other and it takes a long time to actually get the color to mix properly. So instead of, uh, I see this all the time, students will make like almost a whole plate full of mix. You've just wasted a whole bunch of paint. So notice mine's about the size of a quarter. Your spaces when you mix should be about the size of a quarter and not any bigger. So mix it on top of each other. Once you have your color, now it's time to start looking at your values and painting. So the truth about painting is that it just has to make sense to you in your head when you start. For some artists, they start in the highlights and work to the core shadows. For some artists, they start in the core shadows and work to the highlights. Me, I like to start somewhere kind of in the middle. So if I'm gonna be using uh, red, red, violet, and violet, as well as mixing white in to make a lighter pink, which is acceptable, um, I think I'm gonna start off with my red, and that's gonna be kind of my middle tone. So notice when I'm painting, I'm going kind of slowly, even though this is a time-lapse video. I'm moving slowly, and yes, with acrylic paint, you need to use water to actually create a smooth brush stroke. So if you're not using water, or you notice that the paint is starting to get sticky, Add a little bit of water and it'll just glide across the paper. And you'll notice I'm going to start adding a little bit of white here because as I'm looking at my reference image, that section is a little bit lighter. The biggest, most important part about painting is to recognize that this is a painting project that is going to require multiple layers. You're not just going to finish this in one class period. Um, so think about kind of chunking it out. 
my next suggestion when you're painting is also to kind of bounce around a little bit. And the reason why I recommend bouncing around just a little bit is from day to day, you might not be able to get the same violet that you had yesterday. And if you kind of move the violets around and kind of cover different areas, it'll still make your painting look like you painted it maybe all in one sitting. So what I, just to kind of reiterate that, make sure that you're going through and kind of bouncing around your painting so that you have the same colors happening throughout the entire piece. Notice I'm layering uh, over and over again, adding in white, adding in the shadow colors, which is my violet. So this is how we're adding abstract, uh, the, the concept of abstract to our painting. We're not necessarily painting hyper-realistically uh, because the colors are off, but we are trying to match the values that you see in a reference image with abstract colors. So I'm just gonna let this play and you can see how I problem solved mine. Yours might be a little bit different depending on which colors you choose. I should be specific, you are required to use analogous colors when you paint the bone structure. So that is a requirement for you in this project is to use analogous color sets. You are allowed to mix white uh, into one of your colors, maybe your middle tone color to create your highlights. But your shadow colors, your core shadow colors need to be a darker value or the darkest value that you choose from your analogous color setting. When you are completely finished, we're gonna take a day to let it dry and then you will peel off the, the tape. You're gonna peel at a 45 degree angle and that way you don't accidentally tear and rip into your painting. And then go back through, erase out any of your extra lines, place it the direction that you want it to hang and write your name in the bottom right hand corner.